the United States is facing a crisis of opportunity. Studies have shown that among developed countries, the U.S. has a very high correlation between the earnings of parents and the earnings of their children. In other words, the rich are staying rich and the poor are staying poor. In order to find out how people can advance in the U.S. economy and how various programs and services can help them advance, Child Trends, in collaboration with the Brookings Institution and the Urban Institute, helped to develop the Social Genome Model. The Social Genome Model is a micro-simulation model built using data from a large national survey. It uses that data from real people living their lives to predict how factors in one stage of life predict outcomes in another stage of life. The model looks at epidemics, social skills, economic and parental status, and a number of other factors. And this allows us to see what the paths are to the middle class. There are five life stages in the model. Family formation, or birth, early childhood, middle childhood, adolescence, and the transition to adulthood. So at each of these stages, there are a set of benchmarks that, through the model, we've determined are the best predictors of a child becoming middle class by adulthood. Let me give you some examples. If a child is born at a normal birth weight to a non-poor mother with a high school diploma, then he or she is more likely to reach middle class as an adult. By the teen years, if a person has graduated from high school with at least a C-plus average and has not become a parent or been convicted of a crime, then he or she has a better chance of reaching middle class by adulthood. What the social genome model allows us to do is run simulations. That's when we adjust some of the variables within the model to see how that changes people's trajectories. And this is a really powerful tool because it not only lets us ask big what-if questions, like what if fewer young men were incarcerated, or what if we increase the number of teens receiving comprehensive sex ed, but if we have a policy that has a known impact on one of these variables, we can run a simulation and see how that might affect people further down the line. What's great is that policymakers around the country are already using the model. Colorado has a program called the Colorado Opportunity Project, which uses a social genome model to find programs that have the best shot of giving more people access to the middle class. The social genome model is already a very powerful tool, but we're always looking for additional new partners and investors so we can improve it even more. We're interested in adding geographic information, which would let us run simulations on a state-by-state -state basis. Another thing we're looking into is a way to make the model user-friendly to the point where anyone could run a simulation on their own through an app or a web page. I think that would really expand the relevancy of the model and help it reach a lot more people.